I apologize for some reason the video did not convert from the webinar so we're just gonna redo the video real quick for you what we covered in this session was a little bit more on image control and how to handle scanned images so I'm gonna go ahead and start there and we were using a very simple image at first so let's look at this image and it is a JPEG so it's gonna have some degraded color so let's go ahead and say OK and you can see it comes in as a scanned image generally for something this simple I would use simple artwork and remove the check mark here like we did in the previous webinar and then of course just go in here and pick your colors you know picking white as a background and you know kind of scrolling through these colors and picking them just by left clicking with your color chips or with your eyedropper so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this because what I want to do this time is look at how to handle this as a scanned image here's my view on the scanned image editor sometimes using this for a very complicated image is a little bit easier than editing in the program but basically what you're doing with this editor is the same as what you would do in editing in the generations program just with some different tools so let's go ahead and look at what happens here and when I go into the scanned image editor the image editor kind of picks a threshold of color by default and this one is picked 14 so here's what the image editor is seeing from the image and if you want to compare it you can click on this tab here that says original view in the original view you know this is your image the actual image that is being used the simplified view is what the program is going to see and what we have in this image is you know it's not too too bad we have a little bit of edginess here and if you look really close you're going to see some little color pieces here they're hard to see but you know you'll get used to this as you work with it more but those are those little degraded color shades okay so now I can change this threshold if I want to see less color I could take it to 10 and click on apply and see what happens but you can see seeing less color sometimes is not exactly what we want to happen so I can also try maybe putting it up to 20 on the threshold and checking what the program is going to see but if it's going to see like those little color sections like here and you can see a new one here you know it's going to you know see that even more so when I increase the threshold so let's go back to 14 which was the default and click on apply now if you aren't used to the image editor and because these greens are so close you may not actually see those so we're going to show you what happens let's go ahead and say continue and there's my size I'll leave it at the default and let's go ahead and generate so what happens is you end up with a design that looks pretty good but you have some odd little things like these little pieces in your film strip and you can see where they are right you can also see you know I'm not quite as crisp maybe there because of the way that the um, program has um, you know placed these in the stitching order but I've got these little straggly pieces here and I've got two greens they're very similar but they are two different greens and that's kind of what happens when you use the scanned image editor and even at that low threshold it see, sees different things now here is you know this piece and it looks a little odd in the film strip so I'm gonna look at it in my outline mode and it looks pretty solid there but if you go to outline you can begin to see me zoom in here you can begin to see these little pieces right there's that piece there's that piece and if I right click on this you know you can see the holes that are in those right well I could you know select that piece let me zoom in here and I could hold my control key and I could right click on these pieces and I can come up to my outline editing mode remember I'm in view outline and I can say merge and put those all together you know you can see you know I've got some unevenness here and I might want to clean that up a little bit you know I would maybe do a little bit of uh, different stitch you know color order and then of course I've got these other little pieces that I need to deal with and those are actually going to be over in here you know here's this piece here and it's really difficult to see because they're so small 
that you know that piece is there so it would merge into that and then I've got this little stem piece down here you know this piece of course would be separate because of the circle there all right so that's kind of way one I can do the editing here um, and clean this up a little bit or I can use the you know image editor so let's go ahead and insert the same image again and let's go into our scanned image let's go ahead and say OK and we're in the image editor again it's scanning and it still sees a 14 threshold you know I could try just going to 13 to see if that gets rid of some of the colors but you know it seems to have gotten rid of some of those greens right and things maybe look a little bit smoother so I could try that just going a little bit down and making sure that my colors are being seen very clearly and let's go ahead and insert this image and see what happens so now I've got you know these are all one green okay now when I look at this you know because this stem is connected to these leaves for the most part you know the auto judge is turning this into a complex fill here you know, so I would want to do some editing. I can't exactly turn this all into satin because it's one piece. You can see it's connected as one piece. These pieces would be fine and I would of course just at this point come in here and, and change my fill types and maybe some of my stitch settings to get what I wanted from this design. Alright, so let's go ahead and try this again. Remember the last time, you know, we just changed, you know, one simple setting. I'm going to stay on scanned image we just went from you know 14 to 13 okay I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at this this time and I'm gonna click on the edit button um, before I do that remember here's my original image here's my simplified view so let's go ahead and edit and we're into the scanned editor on your left side is the original view image on the right side is the image that the program is seeing once it's gone through that processor so we can edit in a couple of different ways on your left hand side these are the color chips that represent the colors in the design when I click on one of the greens you can see where it shows the areas and that little second green chip the areas might be harder to see but you can see them highlighted and shaded on the left side at the bottom there's another piece that's in that second green area well what we want are for all of these greens to be together those little small chips and the larger sections we want them to be one green color okay, on your left side you can see they kind of flash so you can select from either window but what we're going to do is we're going to select these smaller green pieces and we're going to select the larger green pieces and we're going to merge them as one so left click on one of the color chips and hold your control key on your keyboard and we'll begin to select both colors at the same time now on this larger green section that we're looking at right now we're also going to split these leaves so here I have, I've held my control key and I've got both of those green sections selected so they're all shaded on the right side and flashing on the left side. Now there's a tolerance box for those of you who have been in other webinars that are at the top. This tolerance box is not going to do anything for me right now. Now let's take a look at the tools that we have. Over on the right side of your window you have these tools. There's zoom in, zoom out, there is a divide tool, there's a merge together, and then there's merge to the closest area. We're going to click on with these items selected, merge together. And once we click that, those little green pieces are going to merge into the bigger pieces. So now we have two green color chips still, but we have these little pieces merged into the bigger pieces, and they're going to be a little bit easier to work with now in this leaf section and the stem we need to look at how to split these apart because the leaves are going to be a little bit too big for a satin stitch and the stems really do need to be a satin stitch 
the upper leaves are fine. They've all merged together. There's no small little pieces anymore. It's that second color chip now that's going to represent the bottom stem and leaf section. And as we click on that, you can see it highlights on the right side and it's going to flash on that second or the left side. So we're going to use the zoom tool. Click on the zoom tool and just press and hold your left mouse button down and drag to the area you want to zoom. If you right click off to the side, you can see I've selected another color area. So don't do that. Just go ahead and right click on the section that you want. Now we're going to use the divide tool and this divide tool behaves a little differently than it does in your regular work area. Divide with the line in the regular work area only allows you to make a straight line. This one is similar to divide with a curve except for this. It won't let me right click to curve. So here we go. We're going to look at where we have to divide and just like with the other divide tools it has to divide by starting on the outside and ending on the outside. So let's left click on that icon to select the divide program or the divide option. And we're going to very carefully divide this leaf away from the stem. And we also have to divide the smaller leaf, although the smaller leaf we could probably leave alone. It's going to be a problem area because of the, the way it's connected in the space between them you can use either side of this work area to divide but what I'm going to do is place a left click on the outside first. You can see my line coming over and then I'm going to place a left click along that outline where I want to divide. And then I'm just going to carefully place left clicks trying to shape what I want divided away. If I make a mistake I can always backspace. But you can see I'm coming up and I'm placing that left click and I'm making sure that I left click on you know that outline as well just as kind of a reference point and then I need to bring this outside now to be careful not to touch any of the other shaded areas that are flashing then I press enter and the highlighting goes away on both sides because this has now been divided I have three colors now but I'm not going to worry about those color chips because I can worry about those in the program later now as I right click on these areas you can see them highlight and the leaf is you know sectioned away zoom out a little so you can see what we have and we'll try to divide away that other section. Now we have this bigger leaf at the bottom and then we have this small satin stitch leaf. This one is the one that's going to give us a little bit of a problem because there's not a lot of pixel space between these colors really look. There's the shaded section which looks really good but if you look on that left side you're going to see these pixels are almost touching on the image so it's going to give us some problems. I'm going to try to divide it away but sometimes dividing something like this away in this portion of the program is going to cause me more problems than it's worth. So I went ahead and I made sure I was you know outside when I started and outside when I ended and now it's showing that it did indeed edit those away. You know I've got more color chips now you can see the color chips on the, the left side and if I write it looks like it's divided and there's my leaf my stem and my other leaf. Now we have one more leaf at the bottom that we're going to try to divide. Now there's a little trick with divide with the line and sometimes using in this portion of the program is just going to cause you some problems and you're going to see what happens when we're done with this. We've done all this work and because this is one piece technically dividing in this side of the program is a little bit more difficult and you can see here even I have the same problem as I had with that other stem it's so close on the image and I've got this additional stem there and you know I could do a lot of work on the dividing here select the divide tool come over here and divide a wisp leaf and be very very careful to stay in the white section when I start and when I end you know but when I'm done you'll see what I mean by having a problem and I'll explain it to you when we move forward as to why that's a problem. When working with images and a vector image it's a little different than working with stitch or outline information in the other side of the program. Bear in mind what the program's done is try to vector or auto trace the image so that 
I can do my editing or combine things. And this is very color block based. All right, so I've got those leaves divided away. If I really want to, I could divide the stem as well. But that's really what I wanted to get done with the leaves, right? And I've got all these little color chips now. They're pretty much the same green. If there's a little bit of a difference, I can always change that when I get to the program. So you can see, even though we had that little piece divided in the past, when I click on it, it did not divide. And the reason is because this is an image and that is one solid piece. So now we're going to just go ahead and put this into the program. And all of my work that I did has gone away. And the reason is image wise and auto trace wise, that is one individual piece with no real discernible color difference. Even in the image, there's no discernible color difference. So dividing it and trying to divide it away and edit it is not going to be easily done in the scanned image editor. There needs to be a color difference there. But good news, I can do it in the program. And sometimes that's just as quick and sometimes it's a little easier. So we're going to just use the zoom tools, click on my, my zoom in, press and hold my left mouse button and drag around the area I want to zoom in on. Then I go up to view outline. And that puts me in the shaded um, editing mode. And I can just go to the outline option on my menu, or I can right click on the shaded area to get the menu as well, and select divide with a curve. Now, divide with a curve in this side of the program behaves the same way, except I can right click and get a nice even curve. And it's a little bit cleaner division here. And because we're now a vectored stitch data, outline, it's going to divide for me and I can see those divides immediately and they're going to stay. The scanned image editor is dealing with color and image data. The editor in the program in your work area is dealing with an outline and it's vectored, but it's going to behave differently. It's not just the image and just the colors. And you can see here I'm able to divide these away with a little more ease actually than trying to divide the same color of something in the other program. The scanned image editor to divide things away really needs that to be a different color area. So there you go, I've gotten everything divided away and we are good to go on our sections. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, you know, we can change these to anything we want. The leaves are complex. I'm going to change the colors just to show you that they're divided. And I can right click on that stem now and I can change it to satin. So I get what I want. But doing it in the scanned editor with everything being very much the same color won't work. They have to be distinctly different colors that have blended together for some reason and there were just not enough distinction between these leaves and that stem. All right, let's take a look at what we can do now with a more complicated image in our program. So let me get over to that folder. And this is just something I took from the internet. It's, you know, similar to a picture. You know, it's kind of colorful and bright and the colors are very lumped together, but it is just a JPEG from the internet. It's very small. And you can see it's coming in as a scanned image. We're going to go ahead and say okay and look at this in the editor. Now bear in mind this is very detailed and here's my I guess um, opinion on using the scanned editor versus using your manual punching tools. For an image like this or a photo you may use this and try to get what you want but sometimes it's just as much work to edit the image to get it exactly how you want as it would be to just learn your manual punching tools. And at the end of this, we're going to have some manual punching tool practice with some images that you can use to hone those skills. For right now, we're going to say OK, put this into the scanned image editor, and you can see the threshold is 99%. 
and you can see what the program is seeing. You know, that white on the plate is actually not really white in the image. Now I could take this up to 100%, but it's not going to really make too much difference. And you can see because of the shape of the plate, there are some darker sections that are kind of blending in together or splitting those colors. So we would have a lot of editing here, and let's try 100% and see what happens. It doesn't make that much of a difference. As a matter of fact, it kind of blends some other things together. But because the colors are there in this image, I can more easily split things apart. Like, for example, you know, take a look at some of these flowers here, and you know, take a look at, you know, like the white in the cup and you're going to see what happens here. It's, it's a very interesting process, like for example this flower right here. You can see in the image that it's a little different shade than what it's blended into on that bottom portion. Because there's actually a different color there, I can go ahead and chop this apart and it's going to stay apart. So all I have to do is, you know, kind of zoom in and you know, take a look at this area. You can see the difference in color there. So let's go to our divide tool this time. And I'll, same thing, I have to start on the outside. So if I want to chop away that bottom portion, I can use the upper portion as the outside of that outline. And begin carving around what I want to pull out of here. And then once I go back to the outside, I just press enter. And you can see it's a distinctly different color. The program has even changed the color of that area. Then I can right click on the area, hold my control key and right click on that second area, and I can merge them into one piece. This is going to stay divided because it's a different color than the piece I carved it away from. Now I can do a lot of editing in here, you know, if I right click on that white portion, what I have is, you know, a lot of white connected, even that yellow center flower. But because it's a different color, I can use my divide tool here. I just have to make sure that I divide all of these away. And I've got a couple of connections so you can see where you're connected. Make your divisions. And you have to make them all as one for this to effectively divide. So I'm just kind of tracing around what area, you know, outside of the shaded area so I can divide that. See, there I am. I've divided that out. I can now select that other little yellow piece and I can merge them together. Now those will stay because they're distinctly different colors. They were blended together but they were different colors. And that's the difference between what's going on here and what went on with dividing those leaves. You have to have a division that will allow for different colors. Otherwise, you should just do the editing in the other side of the program, which is your main work area. So, you know, I've got a lot of different things going on here. I could divide these all out. I could merge things together. You know, it, it comes down to what I want. But in this case, you know, if I want to divide here, remember, take it as one long division. Don't try to divide these in little chunks. It won't work. You have to divide that all at one time. So make sure everything is divided before you hit enter. And once you do, you can see there's your second piece. It's divided away. You can now begin to merge these into other pieces if you want. You know, it's really, you know, up to you how you want to merge things together or not. So if I wanted to, I could carve out this blue very, very quickly. And like I said, just make sure that you do it all in one work, you know, not in little sections because it won't divide away then. So once you have it divided, you can see, you know, there's the division there. You can begin to merge colors together. Just right click on the color section and make sure that they're touching. And then just merge together. So you can do a lot of editing. Now I've got this white piece and I'm going to kind of slide down and take a look at what else is going on. Now white is pretty good. You know, this is the white of the bowl. And I'm going to have a big problem when I get to here. That's all merged together with the background. That cup was white enough. So if I want to divide this out, I need to make sure I know 
where I have to divide and it has to be done in one sweeping motion. So I'm going to start here and work my way down and I can divide this cup shape any way I want but I have to divide it out at one time, divide all the sections away at one time that I you know want carved out. So don't think it's just a couple of pieces. Make sure you know what you need to carve away and where your in and out points would be so that you can get this carved correctly. So there I go. I'm carving my cup shape out. And the only thing that's going to get cut is the section that's shaded. So I don't have to worry about, you know, carving anything else up on accident. It's just going to be the section that is shaded. And I just have to be a little bit careful about where I cut. But you can see I'm even cutting this flower away so that I can get the cup shape and I have a little more control. So let's see what happened once I press enter. There's my cup. It's divided away from the background. You know, it's divided away from that center flower so I can make that flower any color I wanted now. And, you know, I could do a lot of editing here. But to be honest, on a lot of these detail fingers and the stems, I'm probably going to want to manually punch those. Okay, so let's go ahead and insert this into the program. We'll just go ahead and say exit. We can't click on that red X at the top. It would just shut the program down. So remember, just go ahead and exit and continue. And this is going to be inserted into the program and we can just click generate and create the stitches. Okay, there's my sections. You know, I can edit as desired here and even more, it's probably easier to edit on this side and do the same amount of work with faster results than it is in the scanned image editor. If you have a very, very complicated image, like a photo, then you can start blending colors and that scanned editor does have a purpose. You're just going to have to play with that to get a good feel for it. Okay, so we're going to start looking at a little more control in that scanned image editor, which would come in handy if you have a photo. Um, in this case, this was real cartoon and lumped colors. So let's go ahead and open this back up. And we're going to go ahead and take that into the scanned image editor. And look at controlling our colors a little bit. You know, I could, you know, change that threshold, but it's already at 99%. So let's take a look at what we can do with the editor. I'm sorry about that. I clicked uh, continue too quick here and controlling our colors. So I'm going to go ahead and say scan image OK and then edit. Now these are the colors that were seen, those colors that showed up on the right. Now over in my toolbox there's this little thread icon. If I click on that thread icon I can pick my colors but you're better off if you notice I'm picking my colors that I want the program to see just by left clicking on them on the left side in the original image, not in the cartooned or you know, adjusted image that the program saw. I am picking the colors from the original. And you can see those color chips are showing up in my color list. So I can control how many colors are seen in this. Now, bear in mind that if I pick um, a certain blue and I don't pick a different shade of blue, that that's going to blend it in. And you can see what's going on here because, you know, I don't think I picked the green, but you can see it's blended those colors. So those green pieces I did select on the one side are a different shade of green than what's up at the top. So you can see I'm just kind of clicking these colors and you know make sure you get all the colors that you want. It is going to be a way to control this. It's just left click on the color chip that you want and if you click on it and it won't show up then you've already got it selected. So if I just pick three colors, I get something that's pretty abstract, which can be kind of interesting, and this will indeed be created as a design. If I don't like anything that happened or I made a mistake, I can always go back and click on the Apply button or go back into the Edit and Changes. All right, play with that scanned image editor. Just get comfortable with it and play with some of your editing tools when you get a chance. But now I've been talking about manual punch and we're going to take a look at how to learn to manually punch something in the program. Manual punch is kind of like kindergarten. 
You remember when you had to learn to color in the lines and you had to learn to control your writing or your printing so you would trace over your name to learn that hand control and it's all kind of muscle memory. Well this is going to be the same with your mouse. So what we've made here are some images that are going to allow you to practice and just follow them. These images are going to be included on the website and should absolutely be inserted into the program as a template because you're going to manually punch. So here's one of our first ones and what we have are if you see a square that is a left mouse click. If you see a circle that is a right mouse click and these are all numbered. There's some blank ones that you can practice with once you get comfortable and we're going to use manual punching tools. The manual punching tools are going to be on your create toolbar. So if you look, I just pulled that toolbar away so you could see it. In most cases it's going to be on the um, right side of your screen. Now I selected the running stitch line. And you can see it's just create a freehand line and I'm right clicking and you can see that isn't quite bending but you know trust the bezier curves in the program and practice with these images and get comfortable. And if it's a circle you right click. If it's a square you're going to left click. So we're just going to make this line very quickly. You can see I'm just right clicking around here with my mouse and following these nodes. And these are good practice images because you're going to get comfortable with the motion of doing this. You're going to get comfortable with the right mouse click and you're going to get comfortable with how these Bezier curves work in the program. So here we go. I'm going to left click and press enter and then I always press escape to turn off my tool. And if you look at it in 3D and turn off your image, you'll see you have this really nice line. So when you get comfortable with doing this one way, reverse that and practice. Now let's take a look at one of the area ones. And you can see there's, you know, multiple images here. Some of them are for lines, some of them are for areas, and some of them are for satin stitching. Oh, I meant to make that a little bit bigger. Let me go ahead and resize that real quick. Okay, this is one that's for an area. So on my create toolbar, I'm going to come over and select an area tool. So below my create a freehand line, there's a create a freehand area. So I'm going to click on that. And we'll just leave everything in this setting box alone. And I'm going to begin at the bottom and I'm going to left click. And then right click around this and I'm just going to do this very quickly. I'm not going to worry about being super accurate. I just want to show you these tools. So here we go. We're going around and I left click there to stop the curving. See that little bubbled curve? You know I can backspace if I make a mistake but see the little bend there? I left click to stop the curve and then right click to begin the curve. Now when I come down to the bottom I should not overlap these. I can pull back. See where my mouse is where I placed that last left click? It's away from that first one and I just press enter. Now let's take a look at the set and punching tools. Okay, some of these are blank, like I said, and you can practice practice with those later. But when you see an image that looks like this, that has these lines across it, then what you're going to have is a satin input. So let's go ahead and plus that up and make that a little bit darker. And there is our, you know, satin side to side tool. Let me move that out of the way. You can see it's a left click and a left click because this is, you know, really all very straight or very, you know, left click straight. And you can see I'm just following those and there I've got this nice little mitered corner made now. So practice with these images and get comfortable with manual punching tools because we're going to look at those as we kind of move through the webinars. So you guys have a great weekend and I will see you in a couple of weeks.